and we're working now with about eight banks who are very committed to the trader money scheme. As a matter of fact, the banks uh, have uh, also very generously provided phones. So at the moment, we have taken custody, I think, of about 300,000 phones. So for those uh, traders who do not have phones, because a lot of these payments are made by uh, mobile telephony, they are made on a mobile payment platform. So for those who do not have phones, we're able to give them phones, you know, and the banks have provided these phones uh, free of charge. Obviously, they are also looking at the opportunity of um, opening bank accounts for this uh, large number of people. Of course, the banks are also concerned that the telcos might take their lunch away, so they want to make sure that they do as much as possible before uh, the telcos, because the telcos are very aggressive, as you can imagine, about these kinds of schemes. You've heard already about the Empire program, and this is the largest post-tertiary jobs project in Africa. After, you know, uh, in Africa, we're, we're, and of course you know that you've heard it's 500,000 young people who are currently in teaching jobs, you know, and there are also new roles, as N Health and N Agric. Some of our Empire graduates have also been employed, as you've heard, as enumerators for data collection and research because of the new skills they've gained. In addition, uh, we have, uh, in addition to the 500,000 graduates, we also have 20,000 non-graduates working in our N-Build program in various construction and automotive and technology sectors. But we recognize that a great deal more needs to be done. And of course, government cannot do it alone. This is why during our focus labs on investments with the private sector, in addition to driving private sector investment, we've also focused on supporting businesses whose capacity to create jobs is high. But I must say that technology offers for us perhaps the greatest opportunity for jobs for young people. Government has supported already several technology hubs across the country. Uh, just last week, I was at the Genesis Hub in Enugu State, and on Thursday, I was at the CAD Hub in Kaduna State. And in each of these hubs, several new businesses are incubated, several go live every day. FinTech companies are growing every day. In fact, our very robust Empower portal, where we engaged all of our 500,000 uh, graduates and where we do a lot of our schemes, including payment, etc., was built by a Nigerian software company. All the enumeration and payment for the over 2 million and growing trader money beneficiaries are done by local tech or tech-based companies. So there is a great deal of activity in technology for young people, a great deal of opportunity, and they are rising to the occasion. Everywhere I go, we have several uh, things we are doing around uh, technology. We are doing university challenges. We have been in Bayero. I have been in the University of Lagos. We are going uh, to Namdi Azikwe. Uh, very shortly. Every one of those universities, the, the children, the, 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 the young uh, uh, men and women there, are actually so engaged with technology, all sorts of creative ideas, and there's plenty of room uh, for, for the work that they are doing. BOI has recently launched uh, a 10 billion tech fund, which will encourage many of these businesses, especially the, uh, the startups, to start doing some, some very serious work. In Kaduna, we, we, we came across a lady who runs in, in the, in, it's actually in the, in the hub, in the uh, card hub. She runs a, a, a business out processing uh, uh, company where she's training and already rendering service, in, service internationally to many companies, service companies. She's trained a lot of these young men and women who take calls and who can answer inquiries on various, various subjects, from airlines to those who are doing, uh, to, to those who are doing uh, technology-related businesses, to payment systems, and all of these payment systems and companies are actually foreign-based companies that are using Nigerian, uh, Nigerian customer care people. And she has this massive, uh, there are, I think at the moment, almost 300 of those young people and they work a 24-hour shift, and they're earning very decent money for the work they do. And there's so much scope for improvement. A lot of the, those who use the services say that uh, because our English language is relatively toneless, 
you know, we, there's no tonal interference in the English language. They prefer Nigerians, they prefer Nigerian young men and women, rather than some of the places in Asia which they have used in the past. So there's a massive opportunity there as well, and we are going to support uh, those kinds of uh, efforts so that we can actually create more opportunities in, in that respect. We in the economic management team have also undertaken a very rigorous review of the situations and identified a number of measures that need to be taken to address job creation. These include deliberate engagement with the private sector, as, and this is one of those, to develop uh, practical training materials relevant to industry, which we believe will guarantee offtake for those that are trained, an adjustment of the current system that implements the industrial training fund in order to ensure that it provides value to employers in the private sector. Now, we, 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 we've looked, you know, we've looked also at several of the ways by which we can track uh, and assist uh, job seekers. And we are supporting private sector efforts, especially uh, at uh, not just identifying job opportunities, but building some data tracking system that will monitor progress. I'm very uh, excited about uh, some of the implementable recommendations that, will, that have been made today. In particular, the, uh, the commitment to expand the work being done by ITF and the Employers Consultative Forum, uh, NECA, especially on skills acquisition. However, I think we must emphasize uh, scale, scale, really doing things on scale and training and of course placing large numbers of young people in the workplace. These must take into account the need to provide real value to the private sector through the ITF scheme and where necessary develop optimal incentives to support the private sector. I think it will be uh, important also uh, that we commit to constituting sector skills councils and encourage the development of these councils for various sectors, especially in the sectors we've already identified as being priority for job creation. In, in some, I am convinced that we can crack uh, the jobs problem, and we are in the right direction. First, in, by investing in infrastructure, we're investing more in infrastructure today than any previous government in our history. We spend so far, in two budget cycles, 1.7 trillion in capital investments. That's the largest in the history of the country, despite earning 60% less. I think somebody made the point that we're doing far more with far less uh, resources. And we're also looking at solving the power problem. Now this is a major problem, it's been identified uh, very eloquently already by Yalodi. I think it's very clear that we need to deal with the power problem. And we're, going to, we're, we're looking at how to review uh, the existing structure, how to re review some of what happened with the previous privatization, and how to enhance the capacity of those who are doing that business to do better and introduce fresh money into uh, fresh investments also into that sector. And generally, we're looking at how to enhance the, the business environment. Also, we believe that government intervention, direct intervention, can be improved. Today, of the 500 billion which we provided in two budget cycles for social investment programs, we spend under 250 billion in the two cycles. We have not spent 500 billion because we simply have not been able to, uh, uh, to allocate that much revenue to it. And yet, the results are so obvious. We're already employing 500,000 young people. We're giving microcredit to uh, approaching almost 3 million now, despite the fact that we're not even reaching the 500 billion mark at all. We're not even spending half of that, that amount. And we think that if we're able to do, if we're able to spend more, we can truly, uh, we can truly deal with a lot of uh, the, the problems around uh, what government needs to contribute to, uh, to job creation. And we're looking at how to, to, to enhance that, how to improve that. One of the very interesting arguments that always occurs when you have these, when you say you want to do a big social investment program is that the economists and you know, several of our very traditional type of thinkers on how to, uh, how to open up uh, job creation insist that it has to be a top-down approach. 
that a lot of the investment should go towards enhancing business, current businesses and all of that, which, which, which makes sense. But the truth of the matter is that where you have a large poor population such as we have, you must have a massive social investment program as well. You must. Many times at the table you don't have enough people talking about, about the large numbers of the very poor. You know, at the table you don't have that number. So it is for us to look at how to develop those kinds of programs that address the needs of the most vulnerable and the poorest and bring them into the, the, the formal markets. I was saying once to uh, some of our, uh, some of the uh, government agencies in revenue generation and policy that at some point we were able to bail out banks in Nigeria we look, uh, and we spent close to five trillion, over five trillion bailing out the banks. Those who owe the banks probably do not number up to a hundred but we spent that much money in 2009-2010 bailing out maybe about a hundred or so individuals. If we spent one trillion, if we spent one trillion trying to bail out the poor in this country, will make a massive difference. Not five, not five trillion, one trillion. Every year spent one trillion will, will make a massive, massive difference. So, that's, so those are the real issues. I think that you know, when we talk about employment, we've got to look at scale. When we talk about job creation, we've got to look at scale. But we've got to address that bottom of the pyramid, because that's the largest number of our people. So I want to thank you again for the time and attention uh, that you paid to this. And uh, I know that um, we will at least hold an yet another business forum. And uh, I hope that you will be with us uh, to complete all of what we've talked about to implement the things that we've spoken about today. I want to thank you also for the very, very uh, useful comments and contributions that you've made today. And we can assure you that we'll be working on all of the suggestions and working with you uh, day by day to ensure that we're able to do the very best that we can for our people. Thank you. May, may I respectfully ask?